G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up and replacing the thermal paste on a Radiant RX 480 4 gig GDDR5 model. So these ones now have been out for quite some time. And as you can see, this one's seen slightly better days. Don't know what's going on here, but I'll clean that up slightly. Same with over here on this original blower variety of card, factory cooler. And let's see how we go. Looking at it, originally I was intending to take these out, but it looks like we have a few more screws in there. So let's get into it. With the thermal paste getting replaced, I'd say we should get some decent drop in temperature, as this does look to be fairly, fairly not healthy. Hopefully some fresh paste will drop the temps and get this running back to what it should be. I'm using a small triple zero Phillips head screwdriver on these ones as my normal small Phillips head screwdriver is simply just too large. Ooh, didn't expect that to swing on me. With that done, no, still getting nothing there. Now there are two screws over here that I suspect have to come out at the IO shield. So I'm gonna take them out before I go too far. Not sure if that's gonna take off the shield or it connects to the bracket. Next up from here, I'm going to take out these variety of small Phillips head screws that I can see. This may take a little bit of time. Now these particular cards now have been out for quite a few years now. If you've got an RX 488 gig or RX 580 8 gig, you would have been set for gaming pretty much during the whole pandemic, as long as you were gaming at 1080p. If you tried 2K, 4K, you'd give up. But for the price that these originally came out when they first launched, it was around about 200 to 250 Australian dollars, I believe it was at the time. They were extremely good value for money. And as you can see, this cooler doesn't quite want to come off, so I'm going to take out these three screws here. I'm not sure if it's going to undo a cover or if it's where well, we're going to end up with these, but they're there. We'll take them out. Let's see what happens. As I was saying, pre pre pandemic, these were a very good card of value, quite similar to what the RX 6600 XT is right now at the moment. Fun enough, they have almost the same VRAM as these when these launched quite a few years ago. <clears throat> the RX 5800 was a, just mainly a slight, I think a core reduction in size. So then it gave better thermals, could be overclocks or over, have higher clocks. But overall it was fairly similar to the 480. Granted, saw a lot more 580s and 480s at the time. There we go. And we still are stuck. Granted, I have missed this screw right here. Which probably means that all those ones I just took out on the sides probably weren't necessary. What have we got? I wiggle it. Is that going to free up the thermal paste? There we go. Now, wiggle this off here. You see one die, which I'll replace the thermal paste on. We'll probably almost try and replace the thermal pads on here. It does look to be from a heavily smoked area. Looking at the color of the brown, oh, the brownness that's around here, not looking good at all. If we take a look at the cooler itself. This should hopefully come off. As you can see, the cooler itself is still relatively clean, as I have already given this a blowout already. So it passes through. Quality, this is not bad, don't mind it at all. And the inside on here, looking relatively fine. Now looking at the size of the pads, I'm under the inclination that they are one mil thick pads. So I've got a thermal pad here that's 100 by 100 by one millimeter. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna be very much the same. So I'm gonna replace all these thermal pads with one millimeter thermal pads. Take one off here, put it on there, 
looking very much the same. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna take these off. And I'm gonna give this a spray with some, we'll clean off the thermal paste. Then I'm gonna give it a spray with some multi-purpose spray, water disperser, rust protection, lubricant, blah, 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 blah. WD-40 is a more common one around here, but I'm not one for brand names. So I didn't bother getting it at the more expensive price. I also replaced the copper slug here. Put some alcohol on there, give it a wipe. This thermal paste is very crusty. Put that down here and go over that again. Do give it a blast with the air compressor. That seems to have helped it. Or at least helped clear the remaining dust off it. Put that aside for now. To give this, this already gave this a clean with the multi-purpose spray. Gives it a bit of a fresh oily look to it. And go here. Give this a wipe down. Hopefully clear the thermal pads off there. Give it a brush with a toothbrush. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Go over this. Alcohol, get a brush. And again, he's being rather stubborn. Get some more tissue paper. Once I've cleaned the thermal paste completely off, then I'll give it a spray with the multi purpose spray again, give it a blast with an air compressor. We'll clean with the toothbrush all over, and it should hopefully get this re looking relatively back to factory. Well, it's fingers crossed anyway. How I acquired this, this was a trade in towards an RX 6600 XT, which is my current budget go to graphics card for most people. Some people say they want ray tracing and whatnot. Ray tracing, unless you've got DLSS enabled, I don't believe it's still anywhere near what it was advertised right at the very beginning, back at the 2000 series chips. Or I may just be a hater of the ray tracing. It's probably another way, another way to skew that. This last little bit's being very stubborn. I'm just lightly dragging that screwdriver over it. Don't really recommend it. There we go. So now from here, give this a spray. And on the other side too. And I'm going to give it a scrub with the toothbrush. And give it a blast with the aircon. Oh, not the aircon. Give it a blast with the air compressor. And whatever maximum PSI it has, clean this off. Hopefully, after that, we're looking relatively new once more. At least that's what the aim of this is going to be. After a bit of a spray and a wipe, thermal paste didn't quite fully leave. We'll clear up the last of that now. And next up, I'll be cutting up some thermal pads to replace the existing ones. Look at the back. We're now a nice uniform color, no longer covered with dirt and grime and probably nicotine, as I suspect. Here's the thermal pad here. And I'll start with this one here, just because I've already got it out. Size we're gonna need. Yeah, that's looking all right, right there. there we go that to replace the existing one here. There we go take that off. Take these off too. It does look like there will be eight of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Assumably 5, 12 meg each. Go along here. 
Yeah, we'll give this a quick spray as well. Back's looking a bit rough up here. Now we're gonna give this a blast with the air compressor, then wipe it down. Bam. Now, with my needle nose pliers, a pair of scissors, and some hopes and dreams, I should be able to replace this femoral pad. These femoral pads, not this femoral pad. One for the VRMs. Actually, let's go directly to the card itself. VRMs here, will we fit? No, slightly narrower. I'll trim off that little excess that I've got here, and hopefully, we will fit. Pull that down a little bit. Here we go. There, take off this. Make sure you take it off on both sides, or else you'll have a very unhappy VRM or memory. No, with that screw kind of overhanging there. It's all right, I'm happy with that. Next up, let's figure out the size of these. One, two, three. Or just be lazy and go one, two, three. Like that. Could do them individually. Or do them as a trio. Just like that. And then the individual ones down here. I'm just going to go one, and I'll cheat and just go half and half, one there, one there. As I said, make sure you take off both sides of the, pla the plastic film, or else your <laughs> components will have a very sad time. Right now I'm just taking off one side only. I think I'll put the thermal paste down and then take off the other side. And then from there I'll go ahead and reassemble. <coughs> Fingers crossed I've still got some thermal paste left. Um, what have we got here? There we go. There's some thermal paste. Now I do want to spread this to each corner as it doesn't have an IHS, an integrated heat spreader. It basically means if it's not covered, it's not cooling. Now I should be able to get some cardboard here. There we go. I should be able to slide that over. Evenly spreading that out. Go. Go, dab that around, take the fill paste out, move it out of the way. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Somewhere online, someone's raging at that amount of thermal paste. Too little, too much, your choice. Now I'll take these thermal the plastic strip or the plastic film off the thermal pads. This one's trying to rip on me. I'm okay with accepting it ripped. Mainly due to the amount that I've got left. Do want to use that on other things eventually. Uh, here I can probably cut that little bit off rather than having a bit of dag hanging over the side. 
go. There we go. And bingo. Next up from here, I'm gonna line this one up. Where do we go? Above? No, not really. Line it up. Drop it down. Connect up your fan header down here. Push, push. Next up, we got the cooler. And the slug. Line that up. And if I can get the arrangement of it just right. There we go. In like that. We're next up from here, we want to flip it over. I'm just holding it loosely together. Uh, I do want to put some of the screws in. Where are we? Middle one at the end. I'll try and get one in every corner. Now I still haven't put the cover back on, but we will get there. This should be right to go on last, being it's only held in by the six screws. Put this piece back over the top. Switch to my triple zero Phillips head screwdriver and lightly tighten them up in each corner and then I'll go over diagonals. Go okay. tight, 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 tight. There we go. Now we've got six screws to put back in here. Actually, I say six. No, we got more than six, that's for sure. We've got the remaining on the brace itself to go in. And then we've got the cover and then the two screws on the IO shield. Yeah, one millimeter thermal pads have been used in this video. So we should be right with them. Thicker won't necessarily mean better as they will need to squish and reduce and potentially have components not properly touching. There we go, with those ones off. Put the two more in the IO shield up here. If it's gonna let me. There we go. One there, another one over here. cover to go on. One there and put in those six remaining screws with your triple zero sized Phillips head screwdriver. And hopefully from here you'll have a good drop of thermals on your fairly old RX 480 or, or 580 or 470 or 570. All of them are very similar in design to this, especially if they're using the factory Radian cooler, the blower style cooler. And I'd say most of the uh, thermal pad sizes are probably going to be the same as this, as long as they've got this exact cooler on there. If they have a different twin fan cooler, they're probably going to be different. Anyway, I hope that helps. Hope you're able to lower your temps, reduce your noise, clean that dust. Enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.